This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 22. I'm going to start at verse 7. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. I'm going to skip. Verse um, 16, he that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. I want to start off by giving all praises, all honor, and all glory to call Loyam La Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahushai Ba Hashem Hercha Badash Bakatham. Double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone who do rule well. Peace and salutation to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and the freedom to do so now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akwa, the Akim out there listening and learning, Lord willingly. This is an edifying video. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, which appear like the other nations. Subscribe to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. This is the brother Yahweh Sop out of the GMS Cleveland Church, a fellow servant, coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh Hashem And um, back in this book, uh, let me get my camera. Uh, white folks got so rich. Um, the beloved brother, um, Yai Kwam, he's on the other side, but we look at him affectionately as a part of the camp. Um, he gave me this book. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit out of it because, you know, it brought some things to mind. Um, understand that Esau Edom has made a lot of money off Jake. And, you know, that's what scripture said, never trust thy enemy. You know, um, this is a very informative book. Um, so I'm going to begin. It says, um, an indication of the level of it, slime is that it's most prominent and respect, respected figure turned out to be the most corrupt financial gangster in the world history convicted pyramid schemer bernard lawrence madoff so basically they're going into the stock market which is race roulette that's how the subtitle for this um i guess this this because it's broken down in topics um it says his federal prison number. Then it says the stock market's most notorious scheme was known as the crash of 1929. And you got another one coming. Um, you know, right now you got all these um, investors and saying it's about to be a crash. Because what people don't realize is the stock market was set up for the wealthy to get wealthier. You know, you got to understand that it's manipulated. I mean, take the time to think about it. You had all these businesses closed yet and still during this pandemic, but yet and still people made money in the stock market. How's that even possible? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it says, a collapse of the economy that bankrupted the common American while blessing those whites with inside knowledge with an immense windfall of riches. The reform laws passed during the resulting Great Depression were claimed to build confidence in the markets, but they actually institutionalized a true economic, economic apartheid in America because it basically separated and made the wealthy Edomites more wealthy. And, it, you know, it broke some... Um, um, Edomites, but then they set up systems, you know, um, to get the the middle class Edomites. That's where you got the middle class Edomites, and it just really broke Jake. And his second stock market crash because they get they're gonna break it. You know, I was just listening to the elder apostle um, Gabar. He was doing a video with Prince Charles, and you know, basically they coming out saying it. You know, if you can read between the line, so you know, this thing about to happen soon. That's why it's called a dark winter. Anyhow, um, they said, you know, they set up, um, you know, building projects and whatnot. And that's you, how you got your middle class Edomites that left, you know, wealth and homes and whatnot to their people. And then it basically made Jake even more destitute. It says um, the Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 created two classes of investors. The credit investors, the 3% of wealthy whites who were able to invest without restrictions and Two unaccredited investors, the remaining 97% left on the outskirts of the market without access to the free trade enjoyed by money, money insiders. Because you got people that, um, you know, that's why you got certain people that know to be investing in gold and silver, you know. Um, that's like Martha Stewart. Remember when she went down for um, basically um, pulling her money out of the stock markets because she was going to take a loss and they found out about it and basically she had to go do that prison time. You know, because, you know, these people that's well-to-do have insider knowledge, you know. 
The system was rigged with a list of qualifications designed to effectively discourage black investors on the one end, and much of its profit is derived from the mortgage scams. Third world operation operations offshore banking and a host of other Ponzi schemes and swindles often targeting poor black people, including working class and middle class blacks. They are few more there are few more thoroughly sinful than economic injustice. That's a quote. There are a few things more, it's Salaki, say there are a few things more thoroughly sinful than economic justice. And that's why the scriptures say, um, where's that at? Uh, I think it's right here, Proverbs chapter 22, 23. It says, verse 4, labor not to be rich, cease from thy own wisdom. Um, verse 5, wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not, for riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven, because riches can come and go, and you know, you got people right now, like, right now you got people investing in this Bitcoin, not understanding that that was all set up, Bitcoin, they don't even know who made Bitcoin, because it's basically was set up to introduce people to this digital currency, it's not coincidence that this metaverse and this shit that Facebook well, not Facebook, uh, Microsoft, because Microsoft's coming up there with their own version that's going to be tied into Facebook's version of um, um, Facebook's um, metaverse. All this shit going to be interconnected because all of it ties in. Look at Elon Musk. Look at, look at what these people are doing. You know, right now, if you can't come up with no video topics, the spirit ain't dealing with you. I'm just going to say it like that. It's too much going on for you not to have no topics. <laughs> and like the elder said, it's, this ain't the time to be lukewarm. But it's lucky for the digression. Um, then it goes in the subprime mortgages, white master, three car money. So that was a way that they was able to um, um, scheme on black. Um, Jake, it says the subprime lending market has left a scar on the finances of black Americans. One that not only has wiped out a generation of economic progress, but could leave them as leave them at a financial disadvantage for decades. The profoundly influential credit scores were systematically damaging the mortgage schemes, thus affecting auto loans, college education loans, future home loans, and even decisions to marry and start families. And when you read this book, it goes into how like um, Jake pays more in college interest and all that than Esau. Because when you really go into this book, that's why I suggest brothers go check it out. You know, um, the brother gave it to me, but I was going to let the rest of the camp um, read it. I might buy my own because they said he said it's fairly very cheap. It's like ten bucks, but it goes into all these systems that was put in place to actually allow Esau to actually progress and Jake to actually like Esau was allowed to increase in the system because the system is his system, and Jake was made to decrease. But to show you how the Most High is really dealing with us, you still. With all these different barriers and how they set this system up, you still got Jake that survives and actually arises to the top. Now, he's got to be fucked up because once you get to the top, like you got people like Mayweather that got all that money but realize you still just a nigga in America. You know, <laughs> the most high code, ain't he? It says a foreclosure may remain on a consumer's credit report for seven years and can lower a credit score by 85 to 160 points. A financial hit second only to bankruptcy. During that time, if the victim needed any financial services, the fees and interest rates would be astronomical. Black borrowers in Atlanta were charged 745 more in fees than white borrowers with similar credit histories and qualifications. And then it goes into the 2012, Wells Fargo paid a $175 million settlement following revelations that mortgage brokers were working with Wells Fargo had charged more than 30,000 blacks and Latinos borrowers across the country higher fees. A Pew Research Center study found that the wealth of blacks plunged 53% during the Great Recession. And then not only that, you know, when you go into it, you find out that um, so-called, not I was going to say so-called blacks, but when you find out Jake literally may have the same education or may skill, same skill trade, um, same skill set, and maybe doing the same job, but Esau automatically makes more. This book go into how, um, you know, because you got to understand the labor market, like uh, finding out this, the unions was created for Esau because Jake was the skilled laborers. You got to remember, we built everything. <laughs> right. Which make all the fucking sense. I hate this place. Um, where am I at? Uh, let me get that. This is the book of... Um, let me see something. Bear with me for a second. 
I'm going to um, skip. It says the predictable collapse of the housing market in 2008 and the torrent of floor closures in black neighborhoods served to transfer billions of dollars from black pockets to white. Now, I remember that. Remember that Bush was in office. Now, I worked during that time. I had came home from jail. I'll never forget. I had came home from jail. I had a union job before I went. Had some money when I came home. Didn't realize how fucked up the economy was, so I'm blowing the money. And then I end up getting another. No, I think I went to welding school like a year later. Right. No, hold on. I might, I might got the timing mixed up. 2008 was right when Clinton was in office. 2000 to 2008 was Clinton. And then you had Bush. And then you had um, Obama. So, Lucky, it says, um, no high level Wall Street bankers did time for a clear conspiracy that went as high as the White House and is estimated to have cost America between six and 14 trillion. The market collapse produced both the largest setback in black wealth since the transatlantic slave trade and the explosion of white multimillionaires. Blacks and Latinos were more than 70% more likely to lose their homes to foreclosures, with blacks losing about 240,000 homes to foreclosures, while Latinos lost about 336,000. 336,000. So if that ain't telling you that, um, you know, Issachar and, um, well, you know, Latinos, they're usually talking about, well, they talk about Issachar as Latino too, uh, Issachar and Ephraim, you know, because they suffer the same curses. Um, 68. Let me get this. This is the book of Sirach. Or Ecclesiasticus of the Book of Sirach, chapter 31, I'm going to start at verse 1. Watching for riches consume of the flesh and the care thereof drive away sleep. Because you got our people that's actually just chasing the bag, chasing the bag. You know, show you how funny the Most High is. They tell you in the scriptures, Judas had the bag. <laughs> Watching care would not let a man slumber as a sore disease break of sleep. Now, that's a trait of Esau, Edom. But... Jake has adopted these mindsets. You know, um, somebody just made mention of, because the guy that owns the place I work at, he's a millionaire. And um, this, this Jake that I can't stand for real, um, two-third all day, he um, like laboring to be rich. You know, he can't wait for the metaverse. <laughs> Dub-ass nigga. But anyhow, uh, he was talking about how, like, he read somewhere that uh, millionaires only get like five, six hours worth of sleep because they always chasing money. Well, that's a fuck the bad life to lead. You know what I mean? Um, it makes me think of the scripture where it talks about um, to wonder house to house is a fucked up life. Or uh, it doesn't say fucked up, Salakia. So uh, uh, wondering to um, be a beggar, wondering from house to house is a messed up life to lead. It's somewhere in Apocrypha. Just like, uh, you know, it talks about uh, a man um, begging for food. You know, like that's a messed up life to lead. Verse three, the rich have great labor in gathering riches together. And when he resteth, he fill it with his delicacy, delicates, the poor labor in his poor state. And when he leaveth off, he is still needy. He that love of gold shall not be justified. And he that follow corruption shall have enough thereof. Gold hath been the ruin of many and the destruction was present. I'm going to skip. Blessed is the rich that is found without blemish and hath not gone after gold because we are rich in his faith and his truth. You know, it tells you in the scriptures, um, you know, um, the gold and silver should not profit them the um, day of wrath. It's mentioned multiple times. I think it's in the Proverbs. I think it's Proverbs 11, matter of fact. And then, uh, it's mentioned in um, Ezekiel. They should cast their gold and silver in the streets because you ain't going to be able to eat that in that day. Where, where am I looking for? Uh, and then when you go to Proverbs, uh, I think it's 22, it says you have the Most High has created both the rich and the poor. Book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 2, the rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them both. Because it tells you in the scriptures that there's nothing for the Most High to make a man rich. But as you can see how they're switching this money system over, why would I want the wealth of this world? Real, true riches is gold, silver, land, 
cattle, you know, things like that. You know, I understand what the elders meant by um, it's kind of like a curse having children on the side. Because although, like, I got a lot of daughters. And although in the ancient world, I'll be a wealthy man on this side, it's more of a hindrance. The Lord is cold for real. So, um, what am I looking for? I read that one. That's why it talks about a good name is better than, um, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and love and favor rather than silver and gold. Because, you know, you want the most high, you know, if you are doing what's pleasing the most high, he knows your name. So them blessings get answered. Well, those prayers get answered as blessings, you know. You know, and I know any brother that's sincere about this truth have been in situations where they have called on the most high and, um, you know, he's delivered. You know, and that's what you're going to need in them times that's to come because both the rich and the poor are going to suffer alike. You got to remember, those that have something right now are, are about to be transitioned into that system as well. It tells you that in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Rich or poor, free or bond. So if you got money or if you don't, if you um, free out here or if you incarcerated, they all trying to, you know, only people that's not going to get caught up in that system is those of the elect. That's why we pray to be the of the hopeful elect. Um, read a little bit more of this book. And then, um, oh yeah, that's what I wanted. Bear with me for a second. Okay. Um, it's only a couple more pages I'm going to read. Um, this is um, subtitled Sundown Towns. Um, literally hundreds of American towns, many of them in the north, passed ordinances prohibiting um, Jake from living in them or from being in the town after sundown, but generously allowing maids, gardeners, and sanitation workers time to leave at night. And what makes it funny, you have these fucking devil, this rare Hebrew Edomite called Jake Lazy. But we did all the work here. They came to be known as sundown towns, and some of them actually had bells or horns that would signal when Jake were required to vacate. The largest builders of these segregated towns in the post-World War II era was William Levitt, who built four massive towns and forbade the very presence of any person other than members of the Edomite race. These massive suburban home-building projects called Levy Towns built homes at a rate of 30 a day, but the Jewish real estate developer actually went to court to keep Jake out. One young black family that was able to surreptitiously purchase a home in Levittown was subjected to subjected to a months long terror campaign to drive them out. Edomites burned crosses, smashed windows, and subjected the black uh, Jake to round the clock white terrorism. Republican pundit Bill O'Reilly was raised in a Levittown, Long Island. So you got Jake that break their neck to actually. Um, Get the American dream when in actuality it's a dream, you know. You know, like I said, and 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 and, and you're gonna have a lot of people that's gonna choose this life. So they're gonna do whatever they need to as far as incorporating in this system, as opposed to coming out of this system this is the book of revelation chapter 18 verse 4 and i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues so you got like i said our people still to this day like i got a, a jake i work with and i'm pretty cool with him and i you know i told him the truth to show you how the lord gonna judge him you know and the lord can put a spirit on him at the last minute he can just stand up but you know this is the time to be letting go and coming out of this system you know he set it up all this time, you could have bought a little who ride. He done went and um, went to a lot, got a note, and, and and I understood what it was. They trying to make money, you know. What I mean, they gave him a car, no money down, all this shit. Now, yeah, he been locked up, so his credit probably a little bit better. But at the same time, nah, it's because they desperate to, because they and then like you say, like you got a good job. You've been at the job for a year. It's not a good job, but it's a decent job. It ain't no McDonald's job. He could afford the car note and his rent. You know what I'm saying? But he talking about how he's not gonna take part. Fucking with that bitch, Vanessa, but yet and still, you as worldly as you is, I can't see him literally be like, well, when it come down to the time of choosing this job or, 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 or your integrity, I can't see him 
actually saying, oh, fuck that. Because he don't even believe in the most high. Yeah, how about should be all shot? He, he one of them people that's talking about how he feel. Like, it ain't about what the fuck you feel. It's about what the most high feel and how what he like. And that's our problem with our people. Um, let me see what else. I got a, a, um, a quote that people most people wouldn't even know Martin Luther King made. Um, this is um, on page 70. It says, white America left the Negro on the ground in devastating numbers, walked off with the aggressor. It appeared that the white segre segregationists and the ordinary white citizen had more in common with one another than either had with the Negro. They say um, before Martin Luther King died, he was meeting with um, Elijah Muhammad and different people because he, he had come to the conclusion that he couldn't really, we would never have anything as a people dealing with Esau Edom. You know, at the end of the day, uh, just like like Malcolm X, you know, you know, at the end of the day, the Most High set up me and, what, is it, what do it say in the scriptures when the Messiah is born? It said, set up for uh, many to rise and to fall in Israel. Yeah, I, I don't feel like going to get it, but you know, when you take the time to really digest that, everybody's not meant to be saved. That's a clear cut right there. Showing you everybody ain't meant to be saved. Th 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 this this the quote, because I'm looking at the picture. It's on page seven. Matter of fact, I'm going to get it. Let you see it for yourself. So it says, we suffer domestic colonialism. We must achieve self determination the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King as he emerged from this 1966 meeting with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, I think it was one more and this goes in the red lining because that was set up you know yeah and it's talking about how like red lining basically allowed them not to set a system in place where they didn't have to uh, loan to Jake. The Fair Housing Act of 1968 passed less than a week after the murder of Dr. Martin Luther King. Covered over 80% of housing but provided little enforcement power and offered virtually no protection against the private discriminatory practices of, practices of white homeowners, realtors, and banks and zoning boards. Most white families today acquired a goodly portion of their net worth from the appreciation of property that their father secured under the special privileges they received in a racially discriminatory housing market. As a result, 72% of whites own their own home as opposed to 41% for blacks. Because, you like to say, when they put certain systems in play to appease, they, you know, um, they, they lower level brethren by, you know, like when you go into uh, the Bacon Rebellion and all that, you know, they put, you know, that white privilege was enough to keep Esau Edom from rebelling again. Because you got to understand the Bacon Rebellion had Esau rebelling as well. So um, I'm going to end that with that. I, I just got one last scripture because at the end of the day, if you in this truth, you know, if you're trying to still, I mean, it's nothing wrong about, you know, getting something you like if you can afford it. But if you think in 10 years from now in this system, when clearly if you if 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 you are in the spirit, you could clearly see we probably don't even got two more years. Shit, I could feel something coming this year. You know, what I mean? shit, our power are getting fucked with now. So if you like trying to set up. Five, ten years from now, the Lord not dealing with you. Y'all Bashim Yahshua not dealing with you. This is the book of Matthews, chapter six, verse nineteen. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust slack it. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart also be. Verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. And that meaning you supposed to have that tunnel vision. You know, if you ever go see that movie or ever seen that movie Biker Boys with what's the dude named Derek Luke that played on um, Antoine Fisher and um, damn, Lawrence Fishburne, you know, 
he was so good at riding that bike because he was he had tunnel vision. His eye was single to that purpose, and that's how we supposed to be in his truth. Because if you got, you know, that's why it talks about lay up your treasures in heaven. You got to forsake this world because look at what's coming with it. You know, I was looking at that movie, um, that show Black Mirror, the episode of 15 Million Marriage or something like that. And when you really get to digest that, because they won't let you see it. I can't find it anyway. I'm going to have to find um, the app that the brothers use to watch uh, movies and stuff. But basically, you know, it, it was a system in place. And you about to have a similar system with what they create with this NWO. Verse 23, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? So if you focus on something else besides this truth, because this truth is the light, the things of the world could create darkness. And if you more focused on that shit, that's literally could be how great is it? Is it greater than, you know, it, of course it can't be greater than the light. You know, you could be in a complete room of darkness and, and, and light. Uh, you know, it's like with Keanu Reeves when he took that uh, in that movie, uh, Constantine, he took that thing around him and, they, and all the lights went out and then he lit it and with the light as much as how how much of uh, area was darkened. He lit that light and that light actually shined and showed forth all those Spirits, the left-hand spirits. That's why it talks about in a world of darkness, let your light shine forth. You know, there's multiple analogies about the light. But this truth in Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is the light. And if you're not focused on him, then, you know, like I said, the things of the world are of, of darkness. And if you focus on those things, if it comes to your family, your job, your finances, whatever the case may be, is that more important to you than Yahweh Bashim Yahusha? The scary part is the most high already know which way you're gonna go. Verse 24: No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve Yahweh Bashim Yahusha and Mammon. When you go into Mammon, it's basically money. Now, I did a, a deeper, uh, this was years ago, but when you go into it, like um, the Babylonians are supposed to worship the, uh, uh, a power called Mammon, you know, a god of riches. And then, then that's when you go into Molech, and that's why they were sacrificing the Molech, because it was supposed to be a god of riches. You know what I mean? You know, these ancient deities are still here, you know. Um, so, you know, because uh, that's what Esau Edom worships, you know, all these left-hand spheres, you know. So, um, if you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the laws, to the statutes, and to the commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, or you will be destroyed. And with that, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to Kol Halayim La Yahweh Bashim Yahushua Bashim Ercha Kodesh Mokdam. Double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone who do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and the freedom to do so. Now more so than ever, Shalom to the Akwath and the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this was edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations, but whom subscribe to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. Till next time, I'm able to come with another lesson. Shalom, Shalom. Shalom.